Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to go through faults and maintenance issues with the Istabreeze wind turbines and how to fix them. By far the most commonly reported problem with these wind turbines is a small electronic part called a slip ring. The slip ring is what allows the body of the turbine to turn without twisting up the wires that go down the mast. The slip ring that they come equipped with is only capable of carrying 15, maybe 20 amps at a push for brief periods of time. So ultimately they just burn out like a fuse and snap mid-operation. To fix that, I'm equipping it with this larger 60 amp slip ring. Each wire is capable of carrying 30 amps no problem. However, if I pair them up together, they can then comfortably carry 60 amps. That however leads to another issue. The neck of the turbine is designed to carry the smaller slip ring. So what I've done is I've drilled this only as far down as halfway between the two bearings, allowing enough room for the larger slip ring to fit in without risking the structural integrity. Another common failure on these turbines is this ceramic connector block, which overheats and splits or burns out resulting in an open circuit. As you can see from the scorch marks on this one, it was well on its way to doing so. The solution to this is to usually just solder the three wires from the slip ring directly to the three phases of the windings, taking this weak point out of the equation completely. Another major flaw with these is the paint job on the aluminium body. Small imperfections and micro cracks allow oxidization of the aluminium metal to start happening. Once this happens, the paint just begins to flake off. And as you can see here from the inside, it started oxidizing in here, which means that water would have eventually worked its way into the inside of the turbine and destroyed all the electronics. The only way to fix this, unfortunately, is to strip all the paint off and give it a full respray. So I began by stripping it down with a wire brush, which took a few hours, followed by a few more hours of polishing it with a scotch cloth and rubbing alcohol. That way the surface is nice and grease free and ready for fresh paint. It turned out okay in the end, although it almost seems a shame to have to paint over a finish like that. I wasn't sure what colour to paint it, but thanks to a few of your suggestions in the comments on the shorts video, I decided on Battleship Grey in the end. To do this took two coats of grey primer, followed by two coats of clear lacquer. Once the lacquer was applied, it had a lovely mirror finish. After it was left to harden for 24 hours, it was now ready to face another season of harsh weather, and should definitely last longer than the original paint job. Taking the bearings out is pretty simple. I don't have a hydraulic press, so I've set up some 2x4s on the ladder with um, a supported foam tray underneath just in case the magnets drop so they don't get broken. I simply just tap I have a little thrust washer there. And we'll do the same then to get them off the main shaft itself. To separate the main bearings from the shaft, I've just got two metal plates to get right in under the inner race of the bearing. And then it's just rinse and repeat. Replacing the bearings on these is dead easy. If you've got an I-1500, the bearings are an SKF 62052RSH. The RS just stands for rubber sealed. You can also see it on the bearing itself. It'll be written on that rubber seal. 6205 RS. To help the bearing go on, I'm putting a bit of CV grease on the inner race and another bit then on the shaft just so it slides on nice and easy. To tap the bearing down I'm using a 27mm deep socket as it fits perfectly on the inner race of the bearing and simply just tap all the way down until it comes nicely onto the stop and it's all the way home. You're going to use the same method to fit the rear bearing and once you have that done, you can then go ahead and fit the rear generator plate. You're going to need a soft hammer to do this, but if you don't have one, a small block of wood works just as well. Before going any further, the next part is to get the modified neck back into the body of the turbine. To hold the slip ring in place, I've just put a great big slob of Tech 7 in there, which is pretty strong stuff and will hold it in place. 
To tap these bearings into place without damaging the wiring, you're going to need a piece of pipe, like the old bit of exhaust pipe that I'm using here. Okay, so the paint job is still perfect. And the neck is back in all the way until it's past the slot for the circlip to go into. When you're ready to reassemble your generator, the first thing you want to check is that the end plate fits snugly over the lip on the winding body particularly if you've resprayed it. You may have to strip some of the paint back off this lip here and off the lip inside here. And what you want is that nice snug fit so that it's even all the way around. Next up, gently slide the core back in, ensuring that the wiring and the hole for the wiring are lined up with each other. You have to do this slowly and gently as the magnets are gonna to try to stick to the body of the windings. Mind your hands as well, because it will give a pull. When you're ready to fit the other end of the generator, make sure you've got some sealer on the outside and some grease in the middle, and then gently push it down over the bearing, roughly into position. This is probably the hardest part of the job, as the magnets are gonna fight against you the whole time and won't allow you to get it fully home. So to do this, I'm going to use two automotive spring clamps two pieces of 2x4 timber to slowly squeeze the two ends of the generator into the correct position. As I'm increasing the pressure I'm going to have to tap a little bit with a piece of wood on the side of the aluminium end cap. Don't tap it roughly with the hammer otherwise you will shatter the cap and slowly you can bring it all together into the correct position and seal it up. So it's now about two hours later and if all has gone right the adhesive sealant should now be set keeping our two end plates on so it's now time to take the clamps off. looks good. No unevenness anywhere, no gaps. Two plates sitting flush and bearings flush where they should be. So we can now introduce this into the turbine body and solder the phases onto the slip ring. To make sure you get a good solder and a solid connection on this you want to cut off the original little spade connectors that Istabreeze fit to this and then pre-solder all your wires so that when it comes to joining them they go together nice and easy. When it's all done, it should look something like this. Now I'm doing this bit vertically because I have a handy hole in the workbench there and it makes it easy for me to guide the wires down so that nothing's getting pinched or bent at an awkward angle, affecting how the slip ring operates. It also means that we can ensure that the turbine body sits down evenly over the end plate. Just like that. Next thing to do then is just add the nuts and washers. And it's job done. When you are tightening them in, make sure to wind them in a little at a time so that it pulls in evenly on all sides. When you're done then, it should look even the whole way around. Once it's all back together, stick the ID plate back on with two pop rivets. And I'm going to use the multimeter here to do a voltage test just to make sure the circuits are functioning. Put the light on and I'm going to drive it with the impact gun. Won't get it up to full speed but we'll get a good reading off it anyway just to make sure that the circuits are working okay. To test this properly you really need to do a load test but for this video I'm not bothered. Just go back to that first phase now with the, um, with the fresh battery on the driver. Okay, so all phases are more or less equal. And the good news about that is when this was brand new out of the box, we did that exact same test, and it only reached 81 volts, so we have a slightly higher reading this time around. I will come back and do a load test on it later on. So guys, that's how to repair faults and maintain your Istabris i1500. I want to say a big thanks for your suggestions in the comments as to what paint job this should have. I did like the clear coat idea, but it would have taken me hours to polish down the body around the windings in particular. So I went with the Battleship Grey instead. Got a few numbers on the tail there just to make it look a bit more authentic. Unfortunately the Ireland flags that I ordered were a bit too big for the body so I'm going to have to order smaller ones and put them on instead. Hope you found this video useful guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. 
Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.